Okay, welcome back. So today I thought we would run through a couple of purchases I've made, slightly panic purchases during our time in quarantine. So just gonna hop right into it. The preface being that I did panic buy some of these. So some of them I don't know much about, um, but we're just gonna roll through it and see what we got here. So the first thing I got was book five, six, and seven, Keepers of the Lost City series. I have been absolutely loving this series. It's so fun, it's so lighthearted. It is middle grade, and I always suggest have a middle grade going or have one on your shelf because they're just so sweet. They're so lovely just to pick up, especially in times that you feel overwhelmed, which I know I have been lately. I honestly suggest there's nothing better than a middle grade book. It's charming, it's lovely, it's nostalgic. Even if you haven't read this particular series before, it still comes across as incredibly nostalgic and lovely. I haven't read book four, it's on my TBR for this month, and I'm so excited just to sink my teeth further into this series. It just gets cuter and cuter, and it's also lovely. Kind of growing with everybody, watching everybody grow up in the series, honestly couldn't recommend it enough. It's so lovely. Next, the new Sarah J. Mass Crescent City, um, House of Earth and Blood. So I actually have already read this. I read this basically when I got it. It took me about two and a bit days to go through. Um, if I could say anything about this book, it would be that give it some time. Um, the first 50 to 60 pages is very disorienting. There's a lot of names. There's a lot of trying to get yourself into the world and get a little more comfortable. I would say give it some time. And also, if you don't know anything about this book, I didn't know anything going in. I think this is to the benefit because on the flap, it actually does give away something that happens about 100 pages in. If you know, then you know. And I think it's to your benefit to go into this book blind. If you're familiar with Sarah J. Moss work before, then it is kind of eye rolly. It's kind of what you expect. Um, but that being said, just if you get the chance, give it a go. Just know, be prepared to wait about 100 pages before you really start to get into the story unanimously everybody I've talked to it does get better as you read as you go I really only found myself enraptured maybe the last third then we have Brandon Sanderson's Oathbringer um, I'm currently in the middle of reading this series the fourth book comes out this fall I believe um, I have put a pause on reading this because as I mentioned in my April TBR I found I blew through the second one just a little bit too quickly, so I wanted to take a pause. I don't want to get too ahead, read this, and then have to wait months before the next one comes out. So I put a pause on this. I started the Mistborn trilogy. Um, that's on my TBR for the month of April, but honestly, I cannot suggest this enough. I only recently got into fantasy this past year, and Brandon Sanderson is really the way to go. It's a very big world. It's very dynamic characters. He clearly knows what he's doing. This is an author I really cannot recommend enough. I'm so excited to read the third one, but I'm trying to only read this maybe in May, which is my birthday month, and kind of as a treat to myself. Next, we have A Women's War by Jenna Glass. I actually got recommended this by a friend. Um, this is a high fantasy feminist novel. So right up my alley, absolutely adore anything that has to do with women inclusion, inclusion of any kind of way. So very excited to get started. I actually know very little to nothing about this. I just had a friend basically text me in all caps saying, you need to read this right up your alley. Tell me as soon as you do. So I might actually slide this on my TBR for the month if I can squeeze it in. I'm kind of ahead of schedule right now. So very excited about this one. Next I bought um, the first and second in the Frederick Bachman Beartown duology. Um, so we have Beartown and then we have Us Against You. 
Um, from what I understand, this takes place in a small town and um, there's allegations that these boys commit assault on this girl. However, these boys are revered because they play hockey, I believe. Um, and that is a big part of the town's identity. So it struggles with identity of the town, who to believe, what to believe. And my understanding is it does end on a hopeful note. I've heard nothing but good things about this author. Um, so I did want to dive in and check him out. And universally, everybody said that this was the place to start, Beartown especially. From what I understand, the accusations are taken seriously. Um, things like this, I, I do go in with a weary eye just because it can be kind of, it's a very tricky subject to tackle. So I am aware of that when diving into these types of things. So very excited though. I have heard nothing but great things about both of these. I'm gonna stop for a little tea break. What are you guys doing? How is everyone else spending their time? Honestly, I feel like I have nothing to do in any given day but read. Sorry, that's my dog. Okay. Next on the list, we have The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantle. This is about Thomas Cromwell, I believe, after um, Anne Boleyn has been executed and his journey along with the Tudors, what becomes of him, his story. It is a novel, so a novelization of his life, twice winner of the Man Booker Prize. Ooh, did not know that. Anyways, regardless, I love most in all historical settings. I have been struggling with historical fiction lately just because I have found a lot that I have read does center around World War II and it can be very heavy to read again and again and again. Um, so I'm excited to take a bit of a break from that and jump into the Tudor's era. Next we have Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Admittedly, this is my first Cassandra Clare novel and I have had people telling me to start elsewhere um and i just think this is such a beautiful cover i do have it on audiobook for script as well so i think this is an easy one to jump into what i did notice and i will say i'm about an hour into the audiobook is it is a lot of names and you can kind of tell even though this says um book one of the last hour series i'm thinking that i might even go back and read where these group of people started just because as I started I have seen a lot of names referred to and experiences referred to that I'm pretty positive I should know who they are and what's going on and it's it's contextualized in such a way that it's not there's no exposition it's not explained so I think it's to the benefit of the audience maybe to go back or even just if you can google it and get a little bit of backstory so but if we could just take a minute, that is a gorgeous cover. Um, and it also has a beautiful illustration. Very, very excited. I do like having a companion novel usually to the books that I'm listening on audio because I like to switch back and forth. Unless it's a thriller, I find those pretty easy just to listen to audio. Very engaging that way. The last bit is I bought the entire series of unfortunate events. I'm not going to hold them all up again. I did that in my April TBR and honestly, you can go back and watch me struggle. Um, this is something I just wanted to tackle on a 24 hour readathon. I'm going to be doing that this Saturday. So it should be my Wednesday video. Um, honestly, I just think it's cute. It's fun. I recently rewatched the movie and it was a blast. It was just as good as I remember it. Really cannot say that enough. So I'm very excited to reread this and get all the feels, get all the nostalgia back. Very excited. So that is it for my shellfish haul. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Let me know what you're reading down below. And if you'd like to subscribe, I will be putting out videos every Wednesdays and Saturdays. And I will see you guys Wednesday with a new video.